Okay, so here's the deal. I have been doing a faux granite treatment in my bathroom. Redoing the bathroom. So this was the primer that I used. I got it from Home Depot. Then I put this stuff on top of that. This is like two coats. Then I realized it was gloopy because I used a stupid sponge. I used one of these for it and it was too gloopy because it was older paint and it had clumps in it. So I had to sit down with my handy dandy. So here, I'm gonna use this foam roller this time. It's foam and not that nappy roller stuff. So let's see how this works. Since I'm so cheap, <laughs> I want to be able to use this, even though it has clumps in it. I'm gonna use, sacrifice this. It's got a little rust on it, so I'll just buy a new one at the dollar store, right? I'm gonna strain it and see if this works. So let's see how this, I need this to be really thin though. So I'm gonna add water to it. see if this is thin enough. I don't know. Is it going to go through? Oh, it is. Okay, cool. See? Oh! I just glooped a big gloop in there. Did you see that? Oh, this is good. This is good. Okay. See, it's stuck right now. Watch. There's going to be a big gloop come out. That mommy? Ah, I don't want to do it too hard and wreck it. There. Wabba! Mentos? Yeah, Mentos. No, that's it, babe. That's it. Wipe it down. One last time. To get all the... Oh, you know what I didn't do? I forgot that part. Damn it. Okay, I gotta sand that. Hold on. Okay. I'll just do it with my hand. Look at that, how that's coming up there. Dun, 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 that's not good. Because it's wet? Why did that come up so much right there? I think it was just, I kind of glopped it on last night. It was late. Ooh, smooth. Even that area is a little smooth. A little glumpy, a little glumpy. Uh, glumpy. Okay, I'm gonna turn this off and do this. I'm kind of paranoid around the um. Let's see, this is not looking too good. But around the very edges of this because I don't want this to be the area that comes up later. I want it to be a good, good seal. All right, gosh. All right, let's see how we feel. Good, 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 good. A little crumb, some crumbs. Very smooth. Well, very smooth. <gasps> okay. No, I didn't bunch a bunch of crumbs in that, did I? Okay, I gotta get that out of here. Well, stay there, don't get any crumbs in your boots. Here's another part. I have the trim. Now this is the backsplash wood painted with two, three coats of primer, I think. Anyhow, this goes like such because the crappy thin trim that was there before <laughs> Granite is not that thin, so to make this look as realistic as possible, we decided to get something that was like granite thickness, which is wood, right? That looks like granite thickness, right? So when it's done, that'll be the backsplash, right? A little more granite. Okay, so a lot of wood filling, a lot of filling of the wood. And making sure it was all even steven. I gotta attach it to the wall. I think I'm gonna use liquid nails. I was gonna nail it, but then I'm gonna have to I have the countersink. 
Nail, fill, dry, prime. Blech. I think I'm gonna just liquid nails it, so that way I don't have to worry about redoing the front. <sighs> Winging it. This is what it's about. Okay. So no liquid nails. I looked outside, and I'm not gonna go to the store for this. So what I'm gonna do is um, I'm gonna paint these boards. I'm just gonna paint them. Then we'll attach them later. I'll send the husband to get the grenades okay. from the store. So I said screw it. And I went and bought some more paint. There. I bought some more. And so I also bought some 180 or 220. Then I sanded down all the bubbles that happened from my stupid too thin watered down too thin acrylic paint. And we're gonna try this again. Okay, Scooby Doo, that went great. So for reals. I mean, it's got a pretty nice, it's gonna dry. I'll do that 220 grit re-sand and uh, do another coat. Let's see how that goes. One last coat of the black. And I'm gonna re, I'm gonna attach the uh, back. Especially, I hear you kidding. So, no liquid nails. I looked outside. And I'm not gonna go to the store for this. So what I'm gonna do is, um, I'm gonna paint these boards. I'm just gonna paint them. Then we'll attach them later. I'll send the husband to get the grenades from the store. This went on pretty nicely. And a little bit of squish, but this isn't sticking out anymore. It's nice and flush. That's good. Let's make sure this side is. Oops. On this side, sticking out a little bit. That's okay. You know what? We're flush. We're flush. We're good. I'm calling it good. Okay, I'm gonna. Put some paintable caulk here and touch that up so it's a seamless, it'll look like seamless granite. Nice. I wonder, do they have, I wonder, do they have this granite at the backsplash? Is it seamless or can you tell there's a seam? I gotta look it up. I gotta look it up. And then you smush it. Pull it off and let it sit for about three minutes so it gets tacky. You can see how I didn't do that. So it's actually been on here for about an hour. And I pulled it off because it kept one side kept bowing. So um, I'm gonna let this sit for a second, get a little tacky, and put it back. Let's see Every time I let go. See how that separated? So I had an idea, husband. As these two, I'm going to put these, see if I can use that to hold, because I want to put a hole in it because I'm going to countersink it. That way I can use it to hold this in until it's dry and then I'll pull the nail out. Mm, the hole in the wall. But then I can, I'll just fix that hole okay. in the wall, which would be way easier than yeah, easier countersinking fix, and doing all that jazz on there. If you fix a hole in the drywall, then it would be to fix a hole in that wood. So. That's what I'm thinking too. Okay, peanut butter jelly. Peanut butter jelly, peanut butter jelly, peanut butter jelly with a piece of that. Okay. True essence of winging it. Not even using a real hammer. God forbid you want to use the correct tool for the job. That's right. Well, the whole name of my series is winging it. So I got, I mean, that's the way I do everything, right? You can attest to that. Everything I do is winging it, right? I rarely read the directions. I just do it. Let's see if we can... Oh, but look it! It's pulling it out! Shh. <sighs> not good. Yeah. Because drywall is not going to hold you know, too well. What do you suggest? Brilliance? Something heavy that kind of clamps it. Well, this is what I had done. This is what I did do. That's why this is here. Watch what I did. I put this here. I took a hold. paint. <laughs> I know. Neither is that. Yeah, I know diddly do, but listen. This actually does hold it. See? Oh. No. No, it doesn't. It did. Okay, we'll you take that. Get a that. clamp and put it here, holding <gasps> it against it. Do you have a clamp? Go give me a clamp. That's a great idea, smarty pants. Go, yes, go. That sounds good. Come on, do you have something? Oh, yes. Sweetness. Okay. Well, then let's here. Wait, let's put this down first so we don't smush the beautiful paint job. Let's see how it goes. Let's 
should be. Survey says. That's not going to work because you have that in the way, right? That's why it does that. Make it much smaller before you put it on. That'll save you a lot of Haskell. Oh, no, no, no. Get it so it barely fits on and then that way you only have a couple turns, right? Okay, let's see. Let's see if it works. Stop. Don't press my wood. Okay. Oh yeah. So I'm talking about baby. Thank you, honey. Well, this I don't care as much no, it's, about. It's fine. Because I'll just <laughs> look at down here we have issue. Yeah. So you have another clamp? You can put one here. What can we put there? Let me just see. Well, this actually would be easier. I could put a nail in here and it would hold it in. Because it would just have to hold it that way. Might bend just, the nail. Huh? Might bend the nail. Okay, give me a clamp. Oh, wait, a clamp won't work. Clamp won't work. What am I talking about? It won't work. we got to put a nail in the wall. Right. It's not a clamp situation. This is a nail okay. situation. we got the clamp situation figured out. Next step, peanable caulk. And I'm going to caulk the seam along the edge there. So I can paint it. I've done a couple beads of it already. This may be a little premature because I this liquid nails isn't dry yet. I'm banking on the fact that they're going to stick because I am too excited to keep going here. And I didn't even look up to see if granite has a non-seam situation. I just don't want to seam. That's my own personal preference. So one thing I do want to share with you is there's a special tool you can buy to do what I'm going to do in just a second here. You can buy this plastic thing. Oh shoot, I just realized something. This is clamped. I can't go all the way to the end. Well, I can do most of it. Gosh, story of my life, you know? Okay. There's a special tool that you run along there to make the perfect little bead. I'll show you the tool I use. Yeah, this is what we use, people. And it works perfectly. <laughs> Just like the fancy $4.99 thing they have at the store. Isn't that, that beautiful? Look at that. It fits in the corner perfectly. Look at that. You don't need a stupid $4 thing. Okay. Problem is though, we've got, ooh, big smear. Okay, shut up. Done. Now that's paintable, people. That's paintable caulk. Got this from Lowe's. DuPont, interior exterior. It dries clear, but we're painting this sucker. 40 year guarantee. <laughs> so, 40 years, you know, and I'm 80 something. This will be just great. Okay, so this has sat overnight. And I think it's going to look good. I took the clamp off. And as you can see, it's sticking. I just, but we've got a little bit of, ah, I can, whatever, I'll deal with that. So, we're stuck, we're on people, we're on. And I can take this out. And that's on. I'll just repair that later. Yay! I've got to re... I moved this little area where the clamp was. I didn't caulk. So i got to caulk that. When it dries, I'm going to paint it. This, this is going to be the final product. My tester. It's a little wet. That's going to be it. My, this is my mess. I've been here testing and working and trying out the different on my palette. And the kicker at the end was this, doing the old flicking of the black. Anyway, I'll show you the technique when we go in there, but this is the base, the black acrylic, right? This and one pile. Oh, damn it. This. This is the crappy stuff that had the clumps. Okay, this in one pile, this in a pile, this in a pile, 
vanilla in a pile and metallic bronze in a pile. So it was all of those, and this is the sponge. Oh, and then I went back to the black. And I used, these are Re Recollections Extra Fine Glitter in Espresso. This is for like stamping. You find this in the stamping section. And I had originally gave a light spray of this, but I don't, I'm not a big, initially I did this. Maybe I will still do that. And then I sprinkled the brown on top. And So that's what we're using. See the veins? I'm nervous, a little nervous, a little excited. See how it goes. So I'm gonna prepare my plates and we need to have stuff on each. Just trying to remember what I'm doing here. Got black for the after. Got brown as a plate. Brown's actually got a pretty big plate. Then the tan and the camel and the metallic gold I'm gonna to mix together. A little bit more camel than the metallic gold. It's this thicker stuff. Huh. Well, no, I don't like that. That looks tan. Look, come look at this. It doesn't look very appetizing. Thought I could take my camel. Like mustard, like hot mustard. This? The what? camel does? No, I said that does. Well, that's the camel. Oh. And then the grayish stuff is the tan, but I don't oh, want to use like the that. gray. Oh. I like the hot mustard look. Okay, so I'm going to use about half of my little, I'm putting about half of each of these two ounce. These were like 59 cents each. And this big guy was $2. Okay, metallic gold. Okay. My friend Ivory. And then, my friend Bronzy. Half of a dealy pop. That's the color palette, people. Okay, got my brush. Got my guys. I got my sprinkles. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do half of this, and then I'll do the other half. They say to do it in like three foot sections. So everything can be good. So what I need to do first is, hmm, what do I need to do first? I'm going to spray a little gold on here. This is glitter gold spray. I had it. It's Floral Craft Holiday Party. I don't even know. This sticks, but I'm going to spray it. And you know what? It smells like hairspray kind of, doesn't it? Okay. So we got a little bit of, kind of some gloppies, but you know what the beauty of this is? It's all going to get covered up. Show the gloppies. Show the gloppies that I did. Why, why would you put that on first if it's all going to get covered up? Well, paint? because it blends with the other paints. Right? And this is brown glitter that is actually used for <coughs> stamping. You'll be fine. His first step is the brown. So I've got my, come on over here, Daddy. I think my husband <laughs> used to be with Max. And we're going to, oh, I need a blotting plate. Well, I can use the edge of this. Yeah, oh, no, I can't. I need something to blot this on. Hold on, I gotta go get a blotting plate. So I got my blotting plate, my little handy dandy. See how much I got on there, right? I'm gonna blot. And now I'm ready to apply. Well, I'm actually gonna go on my, don't ask me why I'm doing this first, I just felt like it. And I'm kind, I'm, Pressing, lifting. Don't press and smudge. You have to press, lift, turn, press, lift, turn, press, lift, turn, press, lift, turn. 
So we're going to do the top two. Yeah, but I got to use a different tool to do that. Okay. And the reason you only do these smaller sections is you don't want this stuff to totally dry because it, you want it to have blendability with the other stuff. And if it dries totally, it won't blend and make that those fun extra colors that I'm using a very light touch with this. Because if you smoosh it down, you're going to have circle. If you smoosh it down, it's going to be blotch, blotch. You don't want blotch. You want light, pretty go all the way off the edge when you can. And the rest of this. or you'll have giant zebra tiger stamps. Okay, now this glitter down below is sticking to this and being moved around because it's not really a glue, it was just glittered on. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is the backsplash over here. See that big smudge? We'll take care of that. You'll see. It'll be fine. I'm moving relatively quick because you don't want your section to dry. And I have a tendency to go OCD on it and go over a bit much. So I am doing. Now, I just thought about this. I don't have glitter on. How am I going to get? I'm going to have to be blow glitter or something up on the black splash. Okay. I think I got enough blue brown on here. Now we got to turn really quickly to our little friend here. This little friend is going to take care of all these parts I couldn't reach. And you're still going to want to do the same turn and blot technique. Blot, lift, turn, blot, lift, turn, blot, lift, turn. And I'm pressing actually a little harder on this guy because he's more, seems to be more harder to get in there. Okay. Goodness gracious. Okay. All the way around the whole freaking edge. I'm going to do this edge later, but now the corners, we've got to step. Now this is tricky because see the corners aren't taken so I gotta kind of go cuckoo on the corners here. I have my paintable caulk that I used in there. Problem with corners is they can start to look all the same. So you have to make sure that you really variegate how you do it or you can have like this weird, see like there's black splotches. So you're gonna have to get in there I probably did too big of a section here, but we'll see. I think it'll still be okay. Your sleeve is dipping into the Oops, paint. Thank you. Thank wear you. short sleeves. Is that, is that your tip, honey? That's my tip. Wear Russ's short tip is to wear sleeves. short sleeves. I think you just blew everybody's ears off talking into that that loud. Okay. Just trying to make my point. Now, I have a feeling I'm going to end up touching up my paint. Okay, there's a lot of smudgy going on down there. It doesn't look kind of smudgy. Not a fan of that. Not a fan. Okay. Let's do you guys. That's a problem when you use a different shade. You can't see what I'm doing over here, honey. You need to come over here because you're looking at the back of my arm. They gotta see how I'm doing this. Come over around here. They have to see how I'm pushing it down into the corner. And 
blending it out. Push and blend. Push and blend. Okay. Now, before this thing all goes to crap, issue with this edge I don't like so I want to fix it. Problem is as I do that I'm making this weird line that's appearing. Okay, so what I ended up doing was I found this little brush here and I actually took care of my little situation. Well two things I did. First thing I did was I sprinkled some of my glitter on here and I daubed it to get it up here. Okay. Then, thank you. Then the next thing I did was I took this guy, my little stipple brush, and got even more of everything on it, and I took care of these weird spots that felt weird to me that were too black. Okay, and even up here I did some up on the top. Okay, so this is again our reference and where we're at. Reference where we're at. Okay, next color. This. Ooh. And that's the mix of everything. Lots of blotting needed here. Okay, so looking at my thing, see where I'm at. Not tongue. I need the wrong color next. I need to do that other color first. Shoot. Shoot. Okay. Well, I did it backwards. Thanks for help. That's okay. That's okay. That's just fine. As long as I don't do it all the time. Hey, bronzy. Hi, Bronzy. How are you? Good to see you. Ooh, that looks cool, actually. Doesn't look cool. Okay. And blot, 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 lots of blot. And here we go. Looks a little bit like a tiger. Do a smaller section to start like this. I'm not going to go any further because I want it to really blend nicely. Oh, don't do that, Kim. See, look what I did. I smeared. See that smearing right there? Bad. Block, lift, block, lift. If you go too fast, you'll smear. See another smear? Bad, bad. the section I'm going to do. And that's just the way it's going to be. I'm not going to go crazy. Uh, next color, oh, that's a little crazy dark there, but next color is this. So I'm going to block this out. Get a lot of it off of here. Goldy bronze. I hear you, but you know what? Okay, this is way wider than our sample.
it down with some more chocolate. Let's see what we got here. What is wrong with this picture? We went to town with the orange and brown, so we need more black. We need more black, and that should be good. Make this more black to tone it down. That is doable because we're gonna use this anyway. Okay, let's see how we do here. Yeah, look at that. That already looks way better. This is what we're talking about, people. So, thank you. Thanks, hon. Thank you. Okay, first section done. I'm so excited. Okay. See the vein? I've started a vein. And we'll, we'll add more color and deal with other things as we go, but this is just a good start. Okay. I'll show you more in a little bit when you go. I said, screw it. I painted it over black. Now, I got it today. I did it again. It was okay. I wasn't loving it. But I'll let me draw the other side. And the other side ended up being just what I wanted. So this is the look that I want. Now, I'm going to do a little bit of veining on this later. Once it dries. A little bit. Um, and uh, I got all that to do still. Because I decided that it's better to let this dry and then do it separately because it smears. See how it smears? So I'm going to do that backsplash after this dries. Once this dries, then I'll do that. So I won't have that issue. So um, I painted over it again. So this has had two primers, a black, faux granite, black, faux granite, black. This side has had primer, two coats of primer, black, faux granite. So I'm going to do a little sanding, light sanding afterwards to make sure everything looks pretty and even. But I wanted to update you on the situation. So we have a guest staying with us for a week. He's staying with Chevy. And that's Pugsley, one of my two black pugs. Hi, Chevy. He's watching me do this. Okay, so here we are. Here is what we've got so far. Okay. I've done the edge down here. I've done this backsplash. The only thing left to do is that backsplash. And then I'm going to do some veining. You can see kind of the whitish. I kind of like that, right? Now, I tried to do it here, and it came out more beige because it was still wet. So I'm going to go back and do a little white accenting, little black accenting when we're done. I don't want to tone it down too much because I like the color combo we got going on here. So, we'll see how we do. My puppies? Okay, here we are. We've got our veining done. I think. 
I'm going to step back for a while and I'll come back and check it in a little bit. See what we think. If it's too much. We'll see. Let's take it down. I'm going to have it down on the edges. Works its way up over. Now, I'm hoping oh, I can add the sparkles too. So oh, I'm pretty excited. The full effect. Okay. See? Doesn't that look nice? Now, I'm, of course, <laughs> we're gonna clean the sink. <laughs> Hopefully, that comes clean. And I'm gonna do the floor still. Pugsley's here. Hi, Pugsley. Hi, Pugsley. He's very enthralled with our new guest. Hi, Pugsley. Yeah, he likes our new guest. Hi. Hi, Chevy. Hi, Chevy's little house. Yeah. Yeah, I know. This dog has not left my side. Okay. Okay, this is a comparison. This was my sample that I did. My. <laughs> very sparkly fairy sample the sample and then this is what we ended up with so you see how close or different it is it's a lot lighter than my original sample but I like it better like the, this was like kind of a bigger black vein thing and this is more of a thinner vein I like the thinner vein with the more contrast I think it's gonna look better when it's all look at that that's sharp that is sharp, people. Sharp. Here comes the fun stuff. So I have the Duplicolor Paint Sharp Paint Shop Gloss, Gloss Clear Coat. Say that five times fast. Gloss Clear Coat. Ready to spray lacquer. No mixing required. No recoat window. So I guess this is supposed to go in a sprayer. But I heard that the automotive top coat is the thing to use on a countertop because it's so awesomely durable. So we'll see how it goes. I'm using a foam roller, ultra smooth. Uh, I got this at uh, Lowe's, I think. It was about three bucks, something like that. But this was about 24. So this was kind of pricey. So we'll see how it goes. I've put on two coats. And I'm actually using 220 sandpaper to sand down all the bumps that I feel and see. And especially here around the rim, it gets a little goopy, and I don't want there to be any. You can see the ridge right there. See that ridge? The ridging? I want to make sure all that's smooth so when I do my final coat, uh, you can see the gloss here. I haven't really sanded that down yet. When I do my final couple coats and my final 1500 and 2000 grit sanding and rubbing compound that it's shiny as glass. This I've already sanded down. You can see the gloss is gone. So I'll continue. Looking good. Okay. Now we have, I don't know, how many coats do I have on here? I have three coats maybe? Four coats, maybe? I think I put three. It was so late. I didn't get to bed till four in the morning. I could have went to bed. I just was excited to do this. All right. So what I'm going to do next is apply one last coat because the final task will be the wet sanding with the 1500 and 2000 grit sandpaper. And then we should buff it out and have a shine just like a brand new car. So we'll see how that goes. Well, I'm waiting for my husband to pick up the rubbing compound from the auto store. I'm going to show you that I took off the black plastic that was covering the cabinets. And it looks nice, doesn't it? Doesn't that look nice? Now, the top is dull from using the 1500 and 2000 grit. I'm going to use rubbing compound to bring it back to a shiny luster again. Now you can notice that this one's hazier than this side because this side was smoother underneath. This one was bumpier because remember all the layers I had to do <laughs> to get the right pattern? 
So this had a higher bumpage, so I'm hoping that that's not the acrylic showing through. We shall soon see. If after using the rubbing compound, uh, it's not looking good, I may just put another layer of acrylic or uh, lacquer on top of this. But right now I'm gonna use my handy dandy cutter and I wanna cut away at this so I can take it off. Tape has been removed. It looks great. Cutting down into it before pulling with your knife is the way to go, right? I really stuck it underneath the rim when I did it. What I did do though, which was bad, you know, I always have to have something bad. So I had my ring on. And since I had my ring on and my hand was turned this way, it was scraping. And I have a running scrape along here. Now, the scrape actually went down. You can see it, hear me find it. it runs all the way here. Um, I sanded it a little bit. But I'm gonna have to. I'm just gonna repoly this side because I know that I know that that went down to the acrylic, and that's not good. <sighs> so one more coat of poly on this side. But rubbing comp compound for this side, so that's good. And the tape's gone. Wahoo! Beautiful. Touched up the paint. Removed the blue tape. Fill all those nail holes, remember, that was holding my board in place, my granite slab. Fill that hole, we'll never know it was there. Eventually we'll paint the trim all white, get a nice white door. Get some hardware from the ReStore, uh, the Habitat for Humanity ReStore. I'm going to put some hardware on there. I need to buff this out with a bonnet, with a lattice wool bonnet, to get my high, 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 high gloss that I want. I need to put a bead of caulk around the edge. I need to re caulk this sucker here. And then, lastly, but not least, I need to stain my floor and paint my trim, finish painting my trim. That was my sample. I really like the way this floor looks. I wish I liked this brown paper. Hmm. Looking nice though, way better than it was, people. Plus my pretty ceilings with my faux coved detail. <laughs> Not too shabby. Not too shabby at all. Fantastic hint. Now, you see on my mirror all the paint pieces that are left? I thought. Oh, I'm gonna have to scrape this off with a uh, razor? No, 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 no. I thought, oh, let me just try these and see. No, well, they're not made for, watch how easily it comes off. There it is. And there it isn't. Ta-da! Just disinfectant wipes. Must be the alcohol. Oh, it's fantastic. It saved me a lot of work. The next project is cleaning this sink. Well, I'm waiting for my wonderful husband to come back with rubbing compound. I'm going to clean the sink. Oh, we've got stain and acrylic, and I'm sure we have automotive top coat on there, you name it. So let's see how we do. I'm gonna try a good old Comet, elbow grease, and maybe a little magic eraser. Let's see how things come out. All done. Got myself some rubbing compound after the 100, uh, I'm sorry, 1500 and 2000 grit sandpapers that I did. Then I did my rubbing compound and it has a gloss to it right now. 
it's not buffed. I need to buff it. The beautiful thing you can't tell is that when you touch it, it's smooth as glass. Smooth as glass. Now it'll be shiny shiner soon. It'll be like really shiny once uh, I get the, what's it called? Slate, the buffer. So next thing on the list is to remove blue tape here and then I need to fix all my oopsies. This is gonna be, the trim is gonna be painted white so that doesn't matter down here. But this we're gonna have to touch up. Touch ups, I got some touch ups to do. So I've got my handy dandy. And I'm gonna do the same thing where I score along without cutting into the, I gotta do this without cutting into the wall. Well, you know, actually, I think we're gonna be okay. I'm gonna do it very lightly. I don't want to leave a big giant. Let's see what we get here. I don't want to peel it off the board. So far, oops, first tear. So I actually have it a little bit. Just in case there's any sheet attaching to the wall, because I don't want to peel away all my hard work. The only thing I have left to do is buff. So let's see carefully. I don't know if I have a buffing bonnet. I think they call it a bonnet. The only reason I know that is because I watched a bunch of videos on YouTube about it. This is coming off nice. Look at that. Nice, clean. Nothing. I was really careful putting this on, though. You can see the, the edge here. That's because I had it kind of down below the wood, actually. So it's kind of... What, honey? Oh, sorry. The boys had them and I forgot, left them out. I watched that Big Brother, by the way. Both of them. Yeah, well, I, I fast forward through them. I don't really watch them. touch up the backsplash. But um, I've done all my buffing. I just need to, not buffing, but my rubbing compound. I just need to buff it up. Feel it with your finger. Feel how glass smooth it is. Nice. Yeah, nice. So I'm just going to get, do we have like a buffing bonnet out in the garage? A what? You know, it looks, looks like a cot, like a lamb's wool thing that goes on a spinning buffer. I thought we did. I'll go look. Maybe. What do you think, Shelly? You look good in this bathroom. You're coloring. 